What is up, Pokemon Pit? My name is Eric, YouTube name Anchor Picker 1023. Here I have my first upload to the actual Pokemon Pit. Today I have a really good black and white one with you you match against Inert Fury, also known as Rich. This is a really, really good match. I'd also like to thank Rich and the rest of the Pokemon Pit staff for letting me narrate my first battle on this match. It actually really means a lot to me, and hopefully, if you guys enjoyed this match, you can please leave a like rating. Maybe check out my channel after. Now, this was a match I had against Rich, and you might have seen this on his channel already. We actually dual commentated this match uh, together. If you've seen this match, uh, you definitely know how good this match matches and uh, it's a really really good match and looking at his team preview I see that Kingdra and I definitely think that thing is going to be special attacker I just have a feeling that thing is going to be a special attacker looking at his team composition and also that Rotom I really hope that thing is not choice because if that thing is sub split everything will really mess with me really badly because I have nothing that wants to break the sub and then take a hit after so let's get into this match he needs off a Darmanitan I need off my Zapdos now I'm expecting this thing to be scarfed based off his team composition, so I'm going to direct switch out into my blast switch to take any physical hit this thing wants to go for. I knew a U-turn was kind of obvious because he would want to just get the initiative predicting my switch, but I knew that I, if just in case he didn't want to over predict my blast toy switch and go for U-turn, I really didn't want to die to a Stone Edge, Flare Blitz, or Rock Slide, whichever he wanted to bring in. Now he's going to bring out this Rotom, and this thing is really already scaring the shit out of me. He could probably kill me off with any move he has, and he could, he could definitely probably kill me off with a Thunderbolt, but... I have the gut feeling that he's going to be that sub pain split variant. So I'm just going to go for the roar, predicting the substitute, and I get that on the money, which is really nice for me because he just wastes 25% of his health. I didn't see, uh, I didn't have time to see any leftovers, and maybe he's uh, life or maybe he's lefties. But uh, he was going to bring out the Kingdra, and I know it's never really safe to assume a Kingdra special because they are more physical, but now the specialness of Kingdra is really coming more into play. And maybe he could be mixed. And he goes for Draco Meteor. Whenever I see special Kingdra, I always suspect specs before I see Life Orb Recoil. If I just see a special move, I'm just uh, expecting a choice specs variant. But now I'm going to go into my bronze, look at my special defensive wall, and I see he switches up to uh, Dragon Pulse. Now I'm going to see Life Orb Recoil here, so now I know it's a Life Orb variant. He probably just went for uh, Dragon Pulse knowing it would do a good chunk to Blastoise because I'm probably uh, physically defensive. And if I wanted to switch out to something, it would, uh, the, the, the damage would actually be nice. Now he's going to go for the Hydro Pump. It's going to do so much damage to my Bronze Long. Just because I'm a, a specially defensive variant, still it's such a strong move. It's going to do so much to my Bronze Long. And I'm just going to go for a Toxic here. I know he has the Umbreon who potentially has the Heal Bell and he probably does have the Heal Bell. But I feel like I want to get this thing out of here as quick as possible. So with Life Orb and uh, Poison Damage racking up, I really don't care if he brings an Umbreon now, because he can go for the heal by now, but also get my free Stealth Rocks up. He does have a Spinner and hit him on top, but honestly, if I can just get that thing out of here and get Rocks up again, it'll be really nice. And also the Rocks in general, even if they're going to get blown away soon, is they're still really nice to have. So... Here, I'm predicting him to go for the heal bell, and the heal bell is really obvious. It was really nice for me because I'm able to take advantage of that uh, heal belling, so I can go into my uh, Heracross, and because Heracross is dual stab, can uh, kill it with uh, Megahorn and or close combat, not and or, or close combat. So here, I'm actually going to be get a little bit aggressive earlier in the match. I'm going to go for a double switch here. I'm going to go into my Zapdos double switch, predicting him to go into his Gligar now, which actually ends up working out right in my favor, right on the money. I'm going to get that switch really nicely, and it's uh, going to actually benefit me a lot. So, here, I go for the Volt Switch. I went for Volt Switch, predicting him to switch out, because I thought that he would predict the HP severe and I double switch this thing in. Maybe he just didn't really know why I double switch this thing in, but here I decided to go a little bit more aggressive again. I should have went for, I was thinking about it, Volt Switch seemed kind of obvious, but he ended up did stay, he ended up staying in. That's a good scope for the HP Ice. And it is going to be able to clean that thing up because Gligars are physically defensive, not special defensive. This is the Life or Max special attack Zapdos, and uh, it's four times super effective. So now he's going to bring out his Umbreon, and basically this thing I really can't hurt. He's actually going to pull a double switch of his own. Don't really know what he was predicting here. Uh, and I really I have no clue, but I only pack Volt Switch on this thing. I don't pack Thunderbolt. I have Volt Switch, Heat Wave, and HP Ice. I'm just going to go for the Volt Switch, so I was going to want to get some damage off on the Umbreon as like, much as I can. But he ends up actually bringing out this Rotom, so I'm like, yes, this Rotom is at such a low range of HP, probably can't get up a substitute, and he's susceptible to any switch I have. I bring out the Armanitan, basically showing this thing, I'm actually not showing him that I'm scarfed just yet, because I do outspeed, uh, if I was Life Orb, I do outspeed Rotom naturally anyway, I think, but I'm just going to go for the Flare Blitz, knowing that uh, he's... This Gligar's dead, which is physically defensive wall. If he wanted to go into Kingdra predicting that, that could have been bad. But I'm just going to realistically just let that thing in stay in as fodder, which is really good. Because that's a big, big, big threat to avoid in that road. I'm so... Now, if you thought the hit on top, I know he's probably going to go for Rabbits, but after minus one, it's really not going to do too much damage to my, close, my uh, Flare Blitz anyway. So I'm just going to switch out into my Blast Blitz. It actually predicts that really nicely and goes for the Toxic. That's actually going to be really, really, really helpful for him because I don't have a Heal Beller. And residual damage on any physical tank or special tank that you have really ends up racking up in the end if they don't have really good recovery. Like, Blastoise lacks reliable recovery, so the Toxic is just really going to just suck on my Blastoise. Now, 
Here, I was kind of predicting him to go into his Kingdra to take the Skull so he can get a free setup with Draco. Maybe if he was mixed, he can hit me. I really don't know. I was just predicting him to go into Kingdra. So I went for Ice Beam because I think it's either two, only two times resisted or it's neutral. I, really, it's, I think it's pretty sure it's neutral, so I decided to go for that over Scald, but uh, he actually just ends in, stays up, goes, stays in and rapid spins. Now I know he doesn't have a spin uh, spin blocker, so I'm just going to go for the rapid spin on my own, but basically now I've stayed in for like three turns, so Toxic is really, really, really racking up. Now I should be able to go for a close combat, and after close combat and Toxic, I'm at not a range of HP I want my physical defensive, my physical defensive wall to be at. He's crippling my walls really badly, and that's, you can't, you don't want to go through your match with crippled walls and just leave it to your offensive pokes. Now, here, he's going to make a really nice play after I get some toxic damage. He's going to make a really nice play here. I'm going to actually switch out into my Zapdos now, try to take advantage of his lowered spec D. And I was so close to switching to Heracross. Basically, I was thinking he would go for another close combat. So I was thinking I can go into Zapdos and Heracross. They both do resist the close combat. But I was thinking I already have Flame Orb on my Heracross, so I don't want to have him take extra damage, the close combat damage, with then Flame Orb added damage. So I was picking, so I was going to Zapdos so I can take the close combat because I resist it and take it, do not that much damage. But he ends up going for Toxic, and if I would have went to Heracross, I would have not gave the Toxic with my uh, Flame Orb, so that would have ended up being more beneficial. But it ends up just uh, screwing me over because Zapdos gets poisoned, but Life Orb and Toxic is never a good combination ever. So now he's going to bring out the Umbreon, and I know I can just Volt Switch on out because uh, the Umbreon Switch is obvious. Volt Switch into my Heracross now is obviously going to directly threaten out this uh, this Umbreon now here. I'm going to go right for the close combat, because if he wants to bring in a uh, uh, even a hit on top after the Intimidate, it's still going to probably be in 2 KO range of that hit on top, so I know that I'm safe to just go for close combat. I ended up going for Protect, just to get the extra 12% damage off of my Heracross with the Burn, and it's kind of just annoying, because that's what Umbreon can do. It's annoying how it does that with, like, Mian Shao too. It can Protect on the High Jump Kick, and boom, 50% gone. But he's been going with Heracross now, and after that range of HP, even at minus 1, I know for a fact that close combat is going to be able to uh, bring him down to a 2 KO range, but I can definitely 2 KO him. Now, I normally do catch uh, Swords Dance on the Terracross, but I replaced it with Earthquake. I really should keep, because uh, like the coverage is kind of bad, because uh, I really have a hard time hitting Ghosts, because, yeah, but most Ghosts levitate anyway. Should pack Swords Dance, because uh, I could be able to SD and be a plus one. And now he's going to go for Sucker Punch. I really knew that if he wanted to hit me with any type of priority, even I'm following that minus one, Mock Punch is resisted, but Stab. Uh, Sucker Punch is more base power, but it's resisted, but it's not Stab, and I knew it could take any hit reasonably well, because Heracross is Heracross. And, um, able to kill off that uh, him on top very, very nicely. So now he's going to bring out his Darmanitan, basically confirming it was Scarf, but I had Scarf suspicions anyway. So now I'm going to go into my Rhyperior, thinking he would thinks my uh, Heracross is really a big threat, so he want to kill it off immediately. But he makes a good play and goes for U-Turn. And U-Turn is also a good play, because it would have probably killed my Dar my uh, Heracross at minus one from that, minus two actually from that range anyway. So yeah, that was a good play on his part. Now he's going to bring out this Kingdra now, and I'm just thinking, okay, I don't really, I need this Heracross, this uh, Rhyperior. Rhyperior is going to help break down his Umbreon if uh, Darmanitan, because Darmanitan is super powerful, not going to be able to do it, and if Heracross is, might be dead by that time, I'm just going to have to sack my Bronze on here. This is the Hydro Pump, ends up hitting, which is uh, good for him. I don't think he missed any Hydro Pumps, and that Draco Meteor he missed earlier in the game really didn't end up biting him in the ass at all, so... Now, Bronze Log is in your fodder. If he would miss, uh, this is good for racking up life orb damage too. If he would miss a, a Hydro Pump, I can be able to get off uh, a Toxic. That would have been nice. But uh, he ends up hitting both. You, I think he got a crit there, useless crit, whatever. It doesn't really matter. He's supposed to hit the move. It would have been hacks if he didn't. So now I'm going to go into my Zapdos, knowing out speed and Volt Switch would kill from that range. And he has no more ground immunity, as he hasn't had since like very early in the match. So I'm just safe to Volt Switch on whatever he wants to bring in. Here he decides to bring out Darmanitan, and I'm just going to go for the Volt Switch. And I end up getting something really, really nice as you're going to see, and it's going to be a down, 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 a critical hit on the Darmanitan, and uh, actually the critical hit ends up helping him out, believe it or not, the crit on the Darmanitan, which is Choice Scarf, which outspeeds my whole team, barring Jolly Adamant nature, the crit on it actually helps him, which you would never think of in a million years, so now that brings up this, uh, Umbreon, and here he's going to go for the uh, Protect, and this is something we discovered when we did the dual commentary, because it was from his point of view, is from Protect, he got 24 HP back. He got 24 HP back. Now I'm going to go for the Superpower now, and it's going to bring him hella, hella, hella low. It's going down, it's going down, it's going down, and as you can see, he's going to be able to live on a little smidgen of HP, and he told me that he lived on 24. So that Protect 24 recovery ended up being the difference of him surviving and him not dying. 
and you just sit there and you're just like, wow. You never, unless you see the other opponent, your opponent's screen, you never really realize how much Lefty's recovery really, really helps because it helped him, it saved his Umbreon, saved him the match. So now here, once I brought in my Rhyperior, I was like, oh fuck, I made a mistake. Because I knew he was going to pass the wish, into, the wish into Kingdra. And I made a horrible mistake. If I would have went after Superpower, it might not have killed, but it had a chance of killing. And now he's free to bring in his Kingdra that could basically threaten out my whole team, so I basically have to bring something else. Fodder. Here I decided to bring out my Blastoise as Death Fodder because it's a really low range of HP. His physical attackers are all gone, but I can be able to kill anything off. But he pulls off Rain Dance. And now I'm thinking, I was, I was seeing a great boat before, now I'm just sitting at my DS screen. Like, what the fuck am I gonna do? I'm sorry, excuse my language. Um, this Kendra has five turns of outspeeding my entire team. He's got five moves to outspeed my entire team. So now Blastoise in there is far just basically to waste a turn of rain. And now I'm basically thinking in my mind what order of pokes I want to sack, when I want to sack him, who I want to sack first, and who I need to keep for the rest of the match. So, side right here is useless. Hopefully he misses Hydro Pump. I can get off, uh... Uh, earthquake on this thing, and maybe, I know I won't kill, but bring him to a point where Life Orb will kill him on another turn, or just two Life Orb hits will kill him, or maybe I get a crit and kill him, or maybe I do kill him. I just hoped Hydro Pump missed, and it didn't miss. Now, here I'm basically thinking, okay, is it Heracry, Zapdos, Heracross, or Manitan? Who do I don't need? I don't need Zapdos anymore, because Zapdos is well by Umbreon. So, bring out Zapdos here. Hopefully, maybe he would miss Draco or Hydro, but he decides to go for the safe Dragon Pulse, and this is just going to kill me off. I don't know if, like, I'm pretty sure I might have had a small chance of living that hit, but it's going to be able to kill me off. So, now I'm just like... Oh, fuck, uh, Darmanitan, Heracross, Darmanitan, Heracross, Heracross. Bring out my Heracross now. Gonna go for a Dragon Pulse, didn't want to miss Hydro Pump or Draco or anything new would kill from that range. Kills me off. <sighs> but, the rain has stopped. Now, it's time for Darmanitan to show that he is the man. He can use two superpowers, he can kill the Kingdra, he can kill the Umbreon who's a really low range HP, even though he's minus one. He can do it. Superpower on the Kingdra, he lived. He lives it. He lives it with, I think it was 12 HP. He's able to live. He goes for Draco, doesn't miss Draco, able to hit the Draco Meteor, and that's the game. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this match. It was a really intense match. It's probably a great way to start off my Pokemon career. Hopefully, if you guys enjoyed, please leave a like rating because it would really help out me being a director on the Pokemon Pit. Please check out my channel too. That would be really greatly appreciated. That was an amazing match, Rich. Uh, Rich is my good friend now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. See you guys next time. It was a really, really good match. Definitely check out my channel. Definitely check out Rich if you haven't already. Thank you guys. See you guys later. Peace out.